Hey guys, what's going on? I know it's been a little while since we did a video. Uh, just work and everything's been getting in the way. Uh, it hasn't really been convenient to do it. So I got a couple hours this afternoon. We're going to work on our next new project. I have these four wheelers that I showed you in the reviews there. And I like to go ride. But sometimes I just want to go ride by myself, you know, clear my mind or whatever. And to do it, my little five and a half foot bed on my F-150, you got to pull a tonneau cover and everything off every time. It gets to be kind of a hassle. So we went over to Harbor Freight and we picked up these first two boxes. It's a little 4x8 trailer. The third box down there is a little dolly. You can throw it underneath the tongue, move it around the yard real quick, whatever. So I can leave this one here at the house and my car trailer and everything else can stay where it is and then I don't have to drive 10 or 15 minutes each way to get it and drop it off and all that other crap. So we're going to go through building this this afternoon and then once it's together, we're going to go back and uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that I want to add to make my life a little bit easier. Some of the stuff I wish it had. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Alright guys, so here's all your parts as you can see. I just pulled them out of the box, threw them on the ground. Um, first impressions, everything looks pretty good. It's all made out of eighth inch angle. The wheels a little bit bigger than what I thought. They are a five lug. Uh, it's got LED brake lights and turn signals for it. Nice looking leaf springs. The fenders are a little cheesy, but whatever, just don't stand on them. Um, it did come with these, these little casters. So this trailer is made to fold in half, so it would be four feet by four feet square. The deck of it folds directly in half and you fold the tongue down and you can you know, put it against the wall or something in your garage. That's what these would be for. You can fold it up and then roll it around or whatever. I'm not going to be folding mine, so those are gonna go in the trash. I have no use for them. <clears throat> Other than that, I mean everything else looks pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy with it for the price that I paid. I'm not going to complain too too much to be honest. Um, the trailer is set up to hold 1145 pounds or something. I'll put the link in the description of uh, the video. This one was an extra $100 I think and it's 1800 pounds. Um, what I did was I went to this one just in case I want to make the deck a little bit bigger. I can put both four wheelers on sideways. Um, I figured my four wheeler is about 850 pounds a piece, that'll bring me to about 1600 pounds. It'll be right at the limit of this thing, but you know, if I'm only going a couple blocks or whatever, it's not that big of a deal. So <clears throat> there it is, let's get going. Alright guys, <clears throat> so I have the mainframe roughly assembled right now. Whenever you assemble a project like this, you want to make sure that you do everything loose. You don't want to go ahead and tighten up this back beam, the center cross member, you may not be square or whatever. So what you want to do is assemble everything, just finger tight, um, and then make sure you're square. Take a measuring tape from diagonal corners, make sure you have the same measurement, and then you can wrap it up. Now, I did mention earlier that I wasn't going to use the fold feature on here. Uh, these are the hinges, <clears throat> and you can see right here, this is where it would fold. So these hinges go on the outside, they stick up over the bed, and that's how it folds over. Well, they didn't send me the correct outside rail, so the holes don't line up, which isn't a big deal, as we're not going to be using it anyway. So, just something to look out for. For $249, I can't be too upset, um, but, you know, if it was a couple thousand dollars, I might be upset and have to call and get the right pieces sent in. So seeing as I got one of the wrong outside pieces and I can't use the hinges anyways, each hinge had four bolts in it. You can see two bolts went on the front frame, two bolts went on the rear frame. What I did was in the center of these cross members, there's three holes on each side. So I bolted through on these two cross members right here so that it wouldn't fold. So I just used the bolts that were from these hinges, threw it through that, so now I have one solid framework. Alright guys, so I mentioned that they gave me the wrong outer rail right here. <clears throat> you can see that there's a little bracket right here where the tongue bolts to. Because it's the wrong one, I have two of this side. There's no hole here in the front right where my finger is to bolt that down. So now I have to drill that hole. Now the next problem is when you come back here, these are the leaf spring mounts. So it's supposed to have a hole right here and there's one directly underneath it on the side there. Doesn't have those either, so now I have to drill those. Another problem I found is in this, this bracket 
where the leaf spring goes, there's a hole right here. And it's not drilled on either side. So we're going to end up drilling those. And we'll go ahead and we'll paint them. Uh, I have some snap-on red paint from uh, a toolbox, like touch-up paint. So we're going to end up using that. But just another one of those stupid problems that you have because you bought a $200 trailer. So what I did was I put the bolts through the tongue all the way over. That side obviously has them. It's the correct piece. This side doesn't. So what that's going to do is help me line up where these holes are going to go. So I only have to drill one. Alright guys, so as you can see, we went ahead and got everything loosely bolted together. And what you want to do now is you want to make sure that it's square. So you want to measure from... Uh, the far corner to this one and the far corner to this one. You want to make an X pattern and you want to make sure that those two numbers are the exact same. So we have 107 and 3 quarters. and five eighths. An eighth of an inch off over nine feet isn't bad. We're going to leave it. So now what you're going to do is run through. I've got the impact gun out and we're just going to tighten up all the bolts for all the cross members and all the corners and that'll make sure that this thing gets locked down exactly where it is. And then we're going to flip it over. We're going to put the tongue on and we're going to put on the leaf spring mounts, the leaf spring axles and everything else from the bottom. Okay. So I should mention that when you go ahead and you put these on, you want to make sure that the bolts go from the outside in. And that's just so anything that's left over sticking out of the nut, you're not going to rub your leg up against and get a cut on later. You might as well have that stuff up underneath the trailer. Next thing is your eyelets on the spring. So the spring has an eyelet on one side and a little slipper side. Let me pull this one out here and I'll show you. So this is your leaf spring. You can see that that is an eyelet and on the other side is just a little slipper here. So what's going to happen is when you bolt this on the trailer, this eyelet will be in the front and as you put spring or uh, weight on the trailer, this little piece right here is going to slip on the bottom of the frame and that's what's actually going to give you the ride. So if you think of a U, <coughs> put this down here for a second, you think of a U like this, that's your spring. When you load up the trailer, it's going to spread apart, and that's kind of how it goes. So when you hit a bump, it's going to go, and what that's going to do is one side's going to be attached, which is the front and the eyelet. The other side is just going to slip on that frame and kind of do this. So after a while, you'll notice that you'll get some wear on the thickness here of the leaf spring, and you'll get some wear where it rubs on the frame there. Just keep an eye on it. If anything happens later, you can always weld a plate to the uh, trailer frame and if these uh, leaf springs get too thin you just replace them they're not that much money So, again, I don't want to make it too tight so you can see there's still plenty of loading in it. And what that's going to do is let me put the axle up on there and make sure that everything lines up. So we'll grab our axle. And the axle has little indents right here, and that's what's going to sit up. There's a pin that sticks out of the leaf springs. Oh, sorry, this goes on this side. So, there's a little hole. And that's going to go in the spring right there and right there. <clears throat> now you're going to grab your U-bolts and your spring plates. So 
So you grab your U-bolts and your spring plates and your U-bolts are going to go down around the axle and they will go through this plate and you're going to put your nut on this side. Again, you want this stuff facing up so that it doesn't get caught on any, I don't know, a rock or a root or something like that if you're driving, you know, not on a paved road or your driveway or something. Okay, so I went ahead and I installed the axle with the U-bolts. You want the U-bolts facing up so that the remaining that stick, stuck out of the nut isn't going to drag on any rocks or roots or anything like that if you're going to go off-road with it. The next thing you want to do is make sure that the bolts that are holding the leaf spring in aren't super tight pinching that leaf spring. You need a little bit of room in there so that it can pivot as you have a weight and it's going down the road, it's hitting bumps. The last thing is you want to make sure you have a little bit of grease on these bolts on the, that are inside the bushing on the eyelet side of the leaf spring. That's just going to help uh, keep you know the trailer from wearing itself out. Just put a little bit of grease on there. So now we're at the point that we're going to install the tires. The tires as they came already are bolted to the hub. You can see the hub here on the back side. Inside the hub there's a couple bearings and on these hubs there's a little grease fitting right here. So make sure that you every once in a while come in and shoot a little bit of grease. What you're going to do is pull this cover and there's a nut <coughs> a nut and a washer that are on the axle already. You're going to take off that nut and the washer, that's going to go on here. You tighten it up so that there's a, just a little bit of drag. And then what you do is you slide the cotter pins provided through and that'll lock it on so your wheels are nice and tight. Once that's done, you'll go back and you'll grease that little greaser on the back side. So you just give this thing a couple of taps around and it'll pop off just like you saw. So the bearings are a little bit tighter than I would have liked on the spindle, but it's the way that it is, I guess. Um, you can see that I got it tightened in with the nut on the end, and uh, the bearings were already packed with grease, so there's no point in me trying to repack those. What we'll do now is we'll go to the little grease fitting on the back, and we'll shoot some grease into it before we go ahead and use it. Alright guys, so that's pretty much the whole frame of this thing. Um, I have these stake pockets that they say you can put around the outside. They give you holes that mount all this stuff. But they're pretty cheesy and I don't think they're strong enough for what I want to do with it. So I'm not going to put these on at all. I'll show you how we're going to mount stuff to this trailer. And uh, you know, if you're going to put walls on it one day or something like that, these would be great for you. But for an anchor point or something, they're just really cheesy. You know, they're probably 16 gauge, maybe a little bit thinner. And uh, you'll pull this off with just a little ratchet strap. So we're not going to use these on this application, but you may have something different for yours. Next, we're going to move ahead and we're going to start doing some of the wiring. The wiring is pretty self-explanatory. There's two lights, one right here and one right here on the front corners. Those will be your yellow lights or your orange lights, I should say. And then at the back, there's a bracket to hold on each tail light. 
and those are obviously going to be your rear lights and uh, underneath that light you can mount your license plate. So I'll go ahead and get those done and we're almost done with this project. Plugs. So we got the frame built and now we pulled it outside we're going to run the wiring through and put the plywood floor on. You can see the plywood over there and then we're going to put some tie downs on it. Okay so we're just starting to get the the floor ready to go on and I want to use the pre-existing holes that are in the trailer. So what we do is just slide the plywood back so that I can mark the center this way and then take a tape measure and measure from this surface here to the center of the hole and then you measure from the edge of the plywood to there. So that's the center of the hole that I need and we're going to use these tie downs so that hole is going to go in the center there and then we'll mark the center here that'll be down recessed and we're going to use a hole saw to cut this out. So we do that in the four spots we're going to put these tie downs and then once this this bolt is in we'll just drill this one through that one's only going to be held to the plywood anyways so we'll just drill and put a bolt in that from the bottom side but that's a quick and easy way for you to take bolts and drop them into an existing hole okay so as you can see now we have our three hooks that we wanted in the front with the same mark there and those holes transferred right through to what we had we took a quarter inch drill and that's going to be the pilot for the hole saw that we need you can see laying here so <clears throat> we need to take a hole saw and cut this so that can recess down into the wood so that just this top plate sticks up above so we're going to take a hole saw now go in on this quarter inch and then we're going to have our hole this will drop down inside and we're going to put our last hole in here once that's all said and done All right guys, so we got the trailer back in the shop. Um, it's too cold outside today to be working out there. But we got the floor on yesterday outside, which was a bonus. So today we're gonna do the wiring. So you saw yesterday we ran the wiring through the frame. The green and the brown are over on the right hand side of the passenger side of the trailer. This is for your tail light. And on the tail light you have these little pigtails. So you can see the eyelet here. That's going to be your ground, brown to brown, green to green, obviously. Now we do have about three extra feet of the wiring that comes from the front of the trailer. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to zip tie it on the inside of the frame rail on these two holes. That way, if we rip the plug off or something on the front, I have enough material here. I can just pull it forward and continue on. Nice little LED lights here. They look like a quality unit. Um, you can see that the floor is on. I did not go ahead and where the bolts are on the edge here that hold each cross member in. You could recess them. Here, hold on, let me turn the camera a bit. There you go. So you can see the bolt head in here. I can stick my finger. I could have went and drilled from the bottom so that this sat down on this frame. But what I think I'm going to do is I'll go get another piece of uh, just quarter inch plywood and I'll lay the quarter inch plywood and I'll just like put a square cut around each head of the bolt so that it'll sit flat. There's a little bit of a bowl shape now with the corners being up on here and the middle being down on the cross member. But I mean for what I'm going to use it for it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you can see that our tie downs are in. And there is a hole right in the middle so any water or anything that decides to pool up in this little recessed area it'll drain right out the bottom these back bolts are right through the steel cross members and the front bolt i just have a fender washer on the bottom side to the plywood so that'll be enough for a four-wheeler or anything small that i'm going to put on this trailer so we're going to go ahead and wrap up the wiring today and then the only thing that's left is I want to add <clears throat> some e-track to the top. Uh, my car trailer has e-track on it, so I'm going to add e-track to this as well. 
So guys, we got this thing built, as you can see. Uh, I have used it a couple times, so it does do what I want it to do, which is hold the four-wheeler. Um, the one thing I will say is the instructions are absolutely horrible. So I ended up building the whole thing off of the exploded diagram, which takes a lot longer than actually having some good instructions. Um, it took me about six or seven hours to put the whole th entire thing together, which isn't too, too bad, but it's a lot longer than what I would have expected for something like this. Um, one thing that I do dislike are these fenders. They really flop around and they move a lot when you're driving. So I think I'm going to end up making a better bracket that'll hold these on a little bit more sturdy. Um, and other than that, the only thing I have added that you guys haven't seen in the video is a couple brackets underneath. I bent some aluminum so that I can slide my four wheeler ramp in and I haven't made a little latch yet for it, but I plan to just make a little latch that'll flip down and it'll hold it in there from falling out. So that anywhere I go, I always have a ramp and I'm ready to go ahead and use the trailer. Somebody needs to borrow it, you know, it's always here and I don't have to worry about strapping another thing down. So other than that, I mean, it's worked well so far and I hope to use it a lot more in the future.